come on, don't just double that, please treble it. Put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Margaret Thatcher. to be here, and I'm really looking forward to talking down to you. <laughs> now, as Mr. Happily uh, noticed, I don't get it. It's very, very rare that I would come down to a, a basement club in Soho. For the simple reason that when you're as old as I am, you want to spend as much time above ground. <laughs> As Mr. Happily announced, I haven't been too well. You'll be very, very glad to know. That today, today I was a... Please let me finish, it's an important part. Today, I was able to... I was able to go to the funeral of a friend of mine. And you know, as I was at the cemetery looking round, I thought, Hardly worth me going home. <laughs> now, last week, I have to be honest and say, talk, talk, Mr. Hathaway, that I was actually here last week. But for security reasons, I wanted to walk among you, completely ignored and generally unrecognised. So I went as Nick Clegg, which was a huge success. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, liberals, liberals on the whole, are very, very nice people. Unfortunately, their parents never told them that life wasn't fair. <laughs> this week, of course, Mr. Cameron has gone to China. Now, I always had a very very good reception in China. I remember Da Zetong saying to me, well his English wasn't very good, but he was very, very complimentary about my style of leadership. <laughs> he said, Maggie, he said, Maggie, you give good head. <laughs> you know, that really chokes me. <laughs> talking to Chinese people and having a meeting with them is half an hour later you want to have another one. Now, <laughs> let me say this about George Osborne. I discovered a very strange fact about George Osborne. Do you know that every time George Osborne breathes, someone in the world dies? <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> If you do that again, someone will throw you a fish. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't speak Eskimo. Could you repeat the question? Where are you from, young man? So I'm from Italy. Sorry? I'm a bloody foreigner. You're Italy. <laughs> the Italy, Italians, of course, when the, the war was announced on Iraq, um, they surrendered just in case, which was there. <laughs> We sent the Ark Royal, they sent three ice cream then. <laughs> now the person, of course, who was the you just sit back in your chair, young man, and I'll get Peter Mandelson to come and plug it in. <laughs> Social changes. The Conservatives, of course, are now friends of the earth, <laughs> which makes sense because we all have friends who own most of it. <laughs> <laughs> the cure for socialism is a legacy from a rich uncle, it really is. But let me tell you this I, I live in Belgravia. <laughs> realise this, but I come from a very, very poor family, from Grantham, 
and a farming community. I remember my mother could do wonders with a dead sheep. I normally made mine foreign secretary. But, uh, <laughs> but that's the problem with a country today. We need those values because we have an economic crisis because people do not understand the value of saving. Every Friday night, my father would give myself and my sister Muriel two sixpences. And he made us go down into the cellar and put those sixpences in a little tin box. I later discovered this was the gas meter. But then it mattered. <laughs> the principle of saving was there. <laughs> marvellous time. But the 80s was a very, very good time, wasn't it? And I know a, a, an economic crisis, but follow the Thatcher way to get out of it by creating many, many small businesses. And in the 80s, I created a great many small businesses, mainly starting with large ones. But <laughs> in those days or so much. Do you know, I used to love the two runners. Did you want to remember the two runners? I used to love the two runners. But you know, I often wondered, could one runner do the job just as well? <laughs> wasn't there just that bit of overmanning there? But I do remember back in the 80s, there was a program on television with a lot of homosexual characters all living together. Well, I thought rainbow should be banned. <laughs> You've been a splendid audience and it's been absolutely marvellous for you to meet me here this evening. <laughs> but I'd like to leave you with a message of peace. I believe in world peace. I believe in peace and prosperity among nations. And as I said to President Reagan, as I said to President Mitchell, and I said to all the world leaders, and of course the Italian Prime Minister, <laughs> as I said to all of them, I believe in world peace. So let's all go out and get peace together. That's your attempt.